Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Uh, we were discussing in the last class about the thrust developed by the turbojet engine and we had derived a equation for the thrust of the turbojet engine as shown here. Sir, in the last class that rho v a is the mass plus, so it should be rho v a into k mass Oh, thank you very much. I am sorry. This mass flow rate has to be multiplied by the cross sectional area a a. So, this is the mass flow rate m dot a and uh, this portion rho e v e into a e is nothing but m dot a into 1 plus f and this is the exit velocity, this is the entry velocity. Okay. Now, this part of the thrust is known as uh, convective momentum flux. thrust due to convective momentum and this is known as the pressure thrust. Typically in uh, aircraft engines this portion will be uh, very small compared to this portion, this is the larger portion, this will be very small compared to this portion. So, later on sometimes we might assume that this portion is very small. Okay. Now, in this equation if you look at this equation the thrust will be maximum when P e is equal to P a uh, that is thrust is maximum when flow is optimally expanded. What do we mean by optimally expanded when P e is equal to E a when the exit pressure is equal to the ambient pressure we call it am, uh, optimally expanded and that is the condition under which it gives the maximum thrust. Okay. We will see a little later why this happens this way. Okay. <coughs> and uh, if P e is greater than P a it is called as under expanded flow and if P e is less than P a it is known as over expanded flow. Now let us say if the uh, turbojet engine is on a test bed then there will be no velocity that is coming in V a. So if engine is on the test bed V a is equal to 0 and therefore you get F is equal to okay. 
this is also known as uh, static thrust or the thrust that the engine can provide when the aircraft is not yet started moving. Okay. <coughs> now we have learnt what is how to get the equation for the thrust of the gas turbine engine. Now let us look at how to determine what is the how efficient is this. The parameter that defines uh, the uh, efficiency or how much of thrust is delivered per unit fuel burnt is known as uh, specific fuel consumption. It is also indicated as SFC. Okay. Now, SFC is nothing but that is mass flow rate of fuel per unit thrust. Okay. Or fuel consumed per unit time per unit thrust. This is SFC, and the unit is. kg per Newton second. <coughs> the typical value of SFC for a gas turbine engine ranges between 31 to 36 milligrams per Newton second. This is the typical value of SFC for turbojet engines. Okay. Now, let us say we have to yes. in the first equation this uh, pressure term is in addition yes so why the thrust will be maximum when p uh, i said we will get to that a little later in the course when we discuss about rocket engines i will be able to show you why it happens that way okay so just hold your question till probably about few more classes now let us say we were to decide about you know buying a particular kind of engine okay uh, you must be knowing this that uh, our lca program okay we are looking for an aircraft engine what are the parameters that we have to keep in mind if somebody something if we have to buy a new engine for a particular aircraft what are the parameters that you think that one must take care of if we have to buy an engine or if you have to decide on an engine for a particular aircraft okay Take sfc then take off thrust thrust take off thrust okay any other size of the okay let's look at it
So, the performance characteristics of a turbojet engine are firstly it is the thrust that is the engine should be able to meet the thrust that is desired of it. Okay. It also includes the uh, static thrust or the takeoff thrust that you talked about. Okay. Then the next one is the specific fuel consumption. This is a very important parameter because if your SFC is low, you will have to spend more to keep the fleet alive. Okay. More so if you are operating a commercial fleet than if you are operating a military one. Okay. Because if your specific fuel consumption is more, then your costs are going to be much higher. Okay. So, you need to have as low a specific fuel consumption as possible. Then the other thing that you talked about is I <coughs> will call it as thrust per unit air flow rate. <coughs> what does this indicate? This will indicate what is the size of the aircraft or the size of the engine sorry. So, higher value indicates smaller size which means lesser drag. So, you want a large value of thrust per unit air flow rate, so that the drag on the aircraft overall drag of the aircraft is smaller. Then you have thrust per unit mass of the engine. Here again you need a higher value. That means a lighter engine. Okay. Are these all? Or do you think there are more to it? life of components yes uh, any engine or anything that you buy uh, things periodically go bad. So, what is the life of each of the components that the engine is made up of is an important parameter because that will be uh, that will determine the actual running cost of the entire fleet. Okay. Typically what uh, aircraft engine manufacturers will do is they will sell you an engine at a lower price because they know that for spares you need to go back to them and that is where they will escalate the prices. Okay. So, life of components is a, a very important parameter and it should have a longer life. Then any other okay that is known as modularity of design which ensures better turnaround time
what do we mean by that let us say uh, you must have all seen this uh, if you have a kinetic Honda or something similar to that uh, Mahendra, Duro or any other scooter like that what you will see is that if there is a problem in the spark plug you will have to take out a lot many things covering that engine to just get to the problem and then fix it. So, if there is a small repair it will take a very long time to do that whereas, if you look at a bike engine you can access it very easily ok. What you would want is that access to be much more easier and uh, you are able to do the repair as quickly as you can which means that the engine will be back in operation as quickly as it can be. Engine uh, not in operation is a bad thing ok, because if engine is not in operation then you are unnecessarily paying the cost without operating it. So, it is better to have the engine in operation so therefore, you can recover the cost. So, that is uh, one of the crucial parameters then lastly these days you have exhaust pollution levels. There are stringent restrictions on how much of NOx that your engine produces and how much of carbon monoxide emissions that it produces and there is a limit to it and you cannot exceed that limit ok. Otherwise, you will not get a certification for your engine. Now, some of these things are put together here in this table here ok. The first column here indicates different kind of engines, then you have the diameter and the length which will give you the overall volume of the engine, then you have the mass of the engine that is indicated here, then the thrust that is produced, the specific fuel consumption, then mass flow rate through the engine. Depending on this you can derive your thrust per unit mass flow rate and uh, thrust per unit weight of the engine ok. Now, if you see the first few engines are all micro gas turbines and the last ones are the large engines. Notice here that the nozzle kind in most of these is only a convergent nozzle which is indicated by C and only the last one that is the Olympus engine has a convergent divergent nozzle. Where is this Olympus engine used any idea? It is used on uh, Concord aircraft ok. That is the only one that uh, uses a convergent divergent nozzle. Concord uh, while it was operational was the only beyond uh, Mark 1 aircraft ok, it could fly at Mark 2. Now, what they used to say is that it could beat time that is between Europe and America. If you have breakfast in Europe and start off you can have your second breakfast when you reach America. So, the time would not have been uh, the breakfast time yet in America when you reach it. So, it can be time is what it was said to be and it that is the only engine that uses a convergent divergent nozzle. The other thing about that uh, Olympus engine is that it uses uh, something known as afterburner that we are going to discuss next um, for most of its operational time which means that the cost of uh, or the fuel consumption would be higher and therefore, the cost would be very much higher. Uh, typically people would uh, spend their lifetime savings to go once from Europe to America to enjoy that one breakfast here and the second breakfast there ok. So, Uh, the units is kg per kg r, kg force r that is different from milligrams per Newton second. This is in uh, this is in SI units and that is in MKS units that I have shown that ok. Ok, now uh, I talked about uh, afterburner 
and things like that. Why are afterburners used? Okay, so let us look at uh, what is known as uh, thrust augmentation next. Why do you think we need this kind of thrust augmentation? Why cannot what is it that is designed for help us out? Why do we need this extra thrust augmentation? That is okay that you are telling me there is a scope for improving the thrust. I am asking why should we look at increasing the thrust, can we not provide it with just the main combustor alone? No? Okay. Sometimes uh, if you have to take off uh, in an airport that is at a very high temperature. Okay. The density of air depends on temperature and if the density is lower then the thrust delivered will also be lower. So, that is the case and again if you are taking off from a high altitude again you need a larger thrust just for take off. In addition if it is a military aircraft on which the turbojet is mounted there are situations in the battle where the pilot would want to drop a bomb and get away from that place very quickly. So, then he might want to use the turbo uh, jet with an afterburner on for a short time okay. or if you have to intercept the enemy aircraft that has already come into your territory, then you need to take off very quickly and intercept the enemy aircraft quickly. So, that again uh, will require the afterburner. So, there are four situations which for which the afterburner is required. take off at high altitude, take off at high ambient temperature. You might ask me why cannot we have a longer runway? Well, typically the runway length is fixed. So, if you have a larger aircraft and a larger takeoff weight suddenly you will want this extra thrust so that you can take off within the limited runway. Okay. combat situations pilot wants to make a quick getaway or again in combat situation need to intercept all this 
four call for a, a larger thrust for a very small duration of time. Okay. So, we need to have a possibility wherein we can get this without having to do it all the time, but do it only for this short time and the requirement is there. And typically this is done through two means. There are two ways of doing this. The first is use afterburner. Okay, and the second one is something known as water methanol injection. Okay. Now, what is this afterburner? You are saying that uh, because in the combustor, main combustor, uh, we do not burn the fuel at its stoichiometric condition. right? We, we do not want the temperatures to go to something like 2300 Kelvin. Uh, we would want to restrict it to something like 1600 to 1800 or even lesser. The way it is done is you use excess air to do that. Okay. You use excess air to bring down the temperatures in the main combustor. Okay. Now, if you look at this turbojet engine, here because there is a turbine you need to bring down the temperatures in the in front of it because turbine blades are only capable of withstanding a certain amount of temperature but there is also uh, air that is in excess that is used here to bring down the temperature that is available for further fuel addition downstream and that is what is an afterburner that is you add fuel downstream of the turbine. Now, you do not have the restriction of turbine inlet temperature and therefore, you can burn things in stoichiometric condition and that is what is done in the uh, afterburner. You have this flame holder or the V gutter here and this is the afterburner. Okay. Let us look at how this afterburner produces the excess thrust. Now, as I said F in main combustor ranges from 0 0.01 to 0 0.03 and stoichiometric value is around 0 0.67 0 0.67. So, a large amount of excess air is there which you can use to add more fuel and burn. Okay. Now, what happens if you burn this excess fuel? Remember when we talked about the nozzle we said V e is equal to So, the exit velocity depends on the temperature. right? Now, if this temperature is larger, then the exit velocity will be correspondingly larger. If you have the afterburner, the temperatures without the afterburner, if you look at the temperatures, temperatures will not be very large because it has expanded in the turbine first and then it goes through the nozzle. But if you had add heat in the afterburner, then the temperatures are much higher and the consequently this temperature will also be higher and therefore, you will get a larger V e. And from our thrust equation which is F is equal to
we see that if V e is larger, then we get a higher thrust. So, that is how the afterburner delivers higher thrust. Now, let us look at how the uh, T s diagram for this looks like. This is the T s diagram for a turbo jet with afterburner on. Okay. Notice that uh, earlier this was the maximum temperature that we were able to go up to because of the limitations of the turbine. Now, if you are adding heat in the afterburner, you can go to a much higher temperature, okay. but we need to remember one thing that we are adding heat at a lower pressure here. This is lower than the main combustion chamber pressure because the fluid has already expanded through the turbine so as to produce work that is sufficient to run the compressor. Okay. So, we have already taken out this work and the pressures are lower here. Now, you are adding heat at lower pressure in the afterburner. Uh, you must be aware of this from your thermodynamics that if you add heat at a lower pressure then the availability will be lower. Okay. So, and consequently you will get a higher specific fuel consumption. Okay. The fuel consumption if you have the afterburner on to without the afterburner on uh, changes by around 100 percent. If 40 to 60 percent is thrust augmentation, then it will correspond to a 100 percent increase in SFC. Okay. So, you will get the additional thrust at a much higher cost than you would have got it if the combustion was only in the main combustion chamber. So, there is always this scope that you would want to go in for a larger and larger turbine inlet temperature, so that you can make the engine uh, give you higher thrust as demanded. Okay. There is another thing that uh, pilots are instructed to do when they switch on this afterburner. What is that? 
as soon as they switch on the afterburner, the pilots are instructed or the engine itself has it in it that it does something. What does it do? Any idea? Uh, most of these engines will have variable area nature nozzle and the nozzle will open up. Okay. So, Variable area ratio nozzle is used and area is increased when afterburner is switched on. Why do you think we need to do this? Why should we increase the area if you switch on the afterburner? Temperature increases, density decreases in the afterburner. So, Yes, uh, you are correct. What happens here is, uh, if you look at the mass flow rate through the engine, that is nearly the same uh, with and without the afterburner switched on. There is a small increase in fuel, but if you look at the numbers, this is a very small number. right? So, the increase from this to this is even smaller. So, the fuel increase is much smaller. The, so, the mass flow rate essentially is constant. M dot is constant. So, what happens is because of the increase in temperature, the density drops. Okay. <coughs> density drops, but velocity increases. Right. So, you need to look at m dot is nothing but rho a v, right. Uh, rho depends on temperature as p by r t and velocity because the nozzle is choked depends on temperature like this. So, you notice that it goes m dot goes as 1 by root temperature. So, as temperature is increased, m dot will decrease. right? So, if you have to bring back the same mass flow rate, then you need to increase the area and that is why the nozzle area is increased when the afterburner is switched on. If you do not do this, what happens is the, there will be a pressure build up and it could lead to stall in the compressor. This pressure build up could travel backwards and could lead to an increase in pressure ratio across the compressor and lead to stall. Okay. Now, let us discuss the next method to increase the uh, thrust of the turbojet that is water methanol injection.
Now, typically one would have added only water, but methanol is also added because <coughs> water at low temperatures that are encountered when the aircraft flies at high altitudes can freeze and that is an undesirable situation to be in. So, you add methanol to prevent this freezing okay. and the methanol uh, also acts as a fuel there. So, it reduces the amount of fuel main kerosene that you use in order to get this thrust enhancement. So, methanol has two purposes there, one is to prevent freezing and secondly acts as a fuel. Now, how does this work? If you look at uh, this turbojet engine, there are two places where you can do this water methanol injection. One is in the compressor and the other one is in the burner. Let us look at both cases. If we look at a TS diagram and just for the compressor, and if we look at an actual process. it will go something like this right. The actual process is a non isentropic process and it will go like this. Now, when you add water methanol, what happens is water is in liquid phase, water and methanol are in liquid phase and they evaporate as they go through this and while they evaporate, they cool the entire mixture and therefore, the temperature decreases and the process tends to become more isentropic than the non isentropic part. So, you might get an actual process something like this with the water methanol injection and as a consequence remember the turbine work and the compressor work should match. You are using this much of uh, from 2 dash to 3 dash this is the amount of work that you are inputting to the compressor for a non isentropic process. If the non isentropicity decreases, then for the same amount of work input, you might actually end up getting a higher pressure here. Okay. So, that is what is happening if you add water and methanol in the uh, compressor itself. You get one it is a more isentropic process and at the end of it you get a higher pressure. Now, if you get the higher pressure then the <coughs> first is you getting a higher pressure, but the temperature at this point is much less than 3 dash. So, you need to burn additional fuel to take it from here to 4 right. So, the SFC will have to increase. Okay. This is how water methanol injection works if you add it in the compressor. Then let us look at next what happens when we add water and methanol in the main combustion chamber that is if you look at this figure you can add water and methanol in the main combustion chamber itself and let us see what happens if we add water and methanol in the main combustion chamber.
if we add uh, water and methanol in the main combustion chamber, remember that the flow at the exit of the combustion chamber is choked. Okay. Uh, you will, we will derive this a little later in the course. You can take it that if the flow is choked, if you add more mass, then the upstream pressure will increase. That is pressure in combustion chamber increases. Now, this increase in pressure in the combustion chamber is not accompanied by an increase in pressure across the compressor. The compressor did not do any work to get this increase in pressure and this was because of the evaporation of water vapor. To evaporate the water vapor, what you need to do is burn more fuel. Okay. So, therefore, the SFC increases. Because you need to burn more fuel to increase temperature of both fuel air mixture and water methanol. Methanol reduces this, but cannot completely uh, take over. Okay. You still need to add uh, some more fuel to be burned so that the temperature turbine inlet temperature is achieved. <coughs> now, SFC increases, and the pressure ratio across the uh, turbine is increased. Not only that, the mass flow rate through the turbine is higher now. because you have water methanol as well as fuel air mixture going through the turbine. So, uh, if you look at what is the amount of uh, mass flow rate going through the compressor that is much smaller than this. So, therefore, the mass flow rate through the turbine is increased, pressure ratio across the turbine is increased. So, you get uh, <coughs> what typically happens is if this is the T s diagram. for the turbine portion, we are only looking at uh, the turbine portion. Let us say if okay, 4 and 5. Now, what happens is Firstly, pressure ratio is increased, right? So it goes to sorry. Pressure ratio is increased while turbine inlet temperature is the same. So this is the new point 4 dash. Okay. Now, because the mass flow rate through the turbine is more, the end point will be much higher than what you get here. Okay. So, this will be the new 5 dash and this is 5. So, 5 dash has a higher temperature and pressure compared to 5. So, you can expand more 
in the nozzle there is an availability of expansion greater availability of expansion in the nozzle therefore you get the higher thrust okay uh, we'll stop here and continue in the next class